Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm taking a look at an electric semi-auto plinker. But before that, we join Rich Saunders on his Grey Squirrel control reins. Well, I'm back out on the squirrels again today. Now the trees here are grown for their lumber value and there's an awful lot of forestry research that goes on here as well. And by damaging the trees, the squirrels obviously affect the commercial value of the wood. Now normally I drive the truck round to a feeder um, on the other side of the woods, but it's such a lovely day today. I'm gonna to have a stalk through the woods, really take my time, have a good look around. It's a good way of assessing the squirrel population. And you never know, I might be able to stalk one or two. There's lots of squirrels in these woods. Um, been shooting them for quite some time, to be honest. Um, but the problem was that we had to stop when the pandemic hit because the woods were literally locked down. They locked the gates and that was it. Um, so they've had a chance to breed up again and the level in the peanut feeders has been plummeting once more. So I think we're pretty much back to square one. I've been walking through the woods for quite a while and I've seen quite a few. It's really crunchy underfoot and it's uh, hard getting close to them. They've been kind of clearing off to be perfectly honest but I managed to see that one and got in closer. Um, I followed him as he was mooching around on the floor and um, I thought I missed my chance. He went up a tree then he came down again and I managed to, to get him and he's dead, you know, stone dead on the floor over there. I'll go and pick him up in a second. Good time though to mention the gear I think. So the rifle is a Daystate Huntsman Revere, it's the new Safari edition. Um, other than the, uh, the stock enhancements with the, the cheek piece and the textured wood, it's a standard Revere, 177 12 foot pound rifle, side lever action, uh, 13 shot magazine, and really, really accurate. Now on top of that, I've got an MTC Cobra F1 scope. Um, it's a four to 16 by 50, and just holding those two together, so nothing moves is a set of sports match scope mounts. Then the only other piece of kit to mention is that I've got one of these GoPro uh, cameras so that I can hopefully record some footage through the camera.
well that was almost a carbon copy of the last one to be honest just walking down this ride and I saw one um, in the woods there on the floor uh, and he saw me and he ran up a tree but then like the last one he turned around again came back down and, and looked out to try and spot me and uh, yeah hit him with a nice clean headshot again and he's gone straight down so I go and pick him up I saw that one again on the forest floor, on the woodland floor, and he scampered along a little bit and managed to creep up to him by keeping a few trees in between us and rested on this silver birch here and um, he turned around and obviously knew I was there because he stood up nice and straight but that gave me a really good clear target to hit him with and he's gone down so I think that's what three in the bag now. I've had a feeder up in this spot for years to be honest and I've shot hundreds of squirrels. I used to have a pop-up hide just down there a little way uh, and you probably saw me and my mate Kevin shooting from it in, in earlier episodes. I've moved the pop-up somewhere else in the woods now on another feeder so um, I'm just going to put up a, a simple screen uh, netting hide and then shoot from that. So I didn't want to uh, make too much disturbance so I've thrown this up pretty quickly but there's lots of cover around here and uh, yeah I'm feeling pretty confident now. Um, the feeder, I just pinged the feeder, the feeder is about 18 meters away which is a great distance obviously for a 12 foot pound air rifle. So now it's just a case of sitting down and hoping that the peanuts do their trick. Well that was a nice easy one, he just settled down on top of the feeder, gave me a nice straightforward shot and that's another one on the ground. Well that one was definitely a bit nervous, I think you could uh, sense the, the dead one on the floor because he fussed around on the bottom of the feeder for a long time, eventually he's made his way up onto the, onto the top of the feeder and I think he must have sensed me or heard me or something because he stood up nice and tall but that just gave me an even easier shot and he went straight down dead from the moment I pulled the trigger, he just flicked around on the ground a little bit which is fairly typical of a headshot squirrel.
and I think he saw me because he froze on the side of the feeder, still as a statue, presented a really good shot, and that's another one down. Well, he really did not like those uh, those dead ones on the floor. They fussed around them for ages, sniffing them and backwards and forwards. But eventually, the uh, the lure of the peanuts was too much. Um, I tend to leave the squirrels on the floor when they're dead. Um, doesn't usually bother them too much. But I think I'm going to have a pick up of those ones now because obviously there's a few too many down there. Well, the action's really slowed down now. I had to wait about an hour for that one. So I think I'm going to call it a day, go and pick up that squirrel. Then they're all going to go down to my local Birds of Prey Centre where they'll feed the owls and the hawks. So thanks for watching. Another great session on the greys for Rich there. Next up, I'm taking a look at a semi-auto electric plinker from Just Air Guns. Now, this probably looks very different from the sort of air guns that you usually see me shooting on the air gun show. Now, to be fair, we don't often feature fun guns, but this is an out and out plinker from Just Air Guns. It's the Crownland Venator Mark II, and it certainly is a lot of fun to shoot. It's a BB gun, and it retails for £559.99. Now, that isn't particularly cheap for a plinking gun, but this one is pretty unique in that its firing cycle is electric. Now, that means that there are no CO2 capsules, no charging kit, and no spring and piston. It also means that it's got a very fast semi-auto action that can decimate cans on the garden range. As you can see, the styling of this gun is seriously tactical. It looks like it's straight off the battlefield. Now, that styling incorporates a Picatinny type top rail, plus two side accessory rails and an extendable butt. Now, if you press in the button, the buttstock can actually slide in and out with six different stop positions to ensure exactly the right fit for you. 
That adjustment means that overall length can vary from 82 to 90 centimeters. Um, and even at full extension, it is still pretty compact. It feels good in the shoulder and it's got that sort of pointability that you want from a fast fire plinking gun. Other features include a nice steep pistol grip and on the Mark II model, a really meaty silencer to hush down the muzzle report. Now, if you add that chunky magazine, this gun certainly has a very distinctive look. If you like your air guns tactical, you're really gonna like this one. Now the gun comes supplied with open sights, which I think is all you're really going to need on a fast fire plinker like this. Uh, you can slide them back and forth along that top rail if you wish. Plus they feature a really neat push button pop-up mechanism. You line up on target by placing the red dot of the front element within the green circle of the rear element and then lining that up on whatever it is you're trying to hit. Now, the front element can be adjusted by hand for elevation and you need a flathead screwdriver to adjust the rear element for windage. As I've mentioned, the firing cycle is powered by battery and the gun comes supplied with a long life rechargeable battery. Uh, that sits inside the butt section once it's connected to the gun. Like the rest of the gun, the trigger blade is of a very utilitarian design. Now, above that is the switch that you use to shift between safe and shooting modes. Now, sensibly, there is no full auto option in the UK, so you are limited to semi-auto, and of course you need to load up with BBs to take advantage of that. Push the release button on the side of the gun and the magazine pulls out ready for loading. You then need to push down the BB follower before loading up. Now the magazine holds 50 BBs and once it's fully loaded, you simply snap it back into the gun ready for action. This gun is made for fun, not power. Now it uses proven airsoft technology to spit BBs out at around 450 feet per second. Now that obviously means that this most certainly is not an air gun for targeting live quarry. Not that that matters because this is a gun that's been designed for out and out enjoyment on the plinking range. It certainly meets that brief and I have had a great time shooting it. The single stage trigger feels really positive and I love the sound of the Venator's action. Now it doesn't come so much from the muzzle as from the gun's internals. Now the semi-auto firing cycle really is just brilliant fun on the plinking range. In fact, it's about the best time I've ever had toppling tins. Another really impressive thing about this air gun is that its build quality feels far superior to what I generally regard as the standard for BB air guns. Now, tipping the scales at about 3.3 kilos, it feels nice and solid without being unwieldy, and all of the engineering seems to be of a really good standard. So, that is the Crownland Venator Mark II electric air gun from Just Air Guns. If you enjoy your plinking and want something a bit different that will certainly boost the entertainment element of your backyard fun gunning, have a look at it on the Just Air Guns website. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but we'll be back again with more in a fortnight. And in the meantime, you can keep up with me on Instagram at Matt Manning Outdoors. Thank you for watching. And remember, if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organization that works to promote and protect your sport. Don't miss the award-winning Air Gun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online.